Welcome to the Ash Wednesday services of Emmanuel United Church of Christ. We are glad you have joined us and found us this day. Will you join me in our opening prayer? Gentle God, we thank you for your Lenten walk through Galilee and our lives. We thank you for healing grace that teaching, teaches challenge. We thank you for the miracle that our little gifts are turned into many loaves. We thank you for the parables that tease us, the supper of Passover and passion that make us whole, the cross and tomb and heaven that calls us. Gentle God, we thank you that it is written in our Gospels and in our hearts is the story of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Services of Ash Wednesday are often times of reflection and confession, of letting old ways die and new be born. Will you join me in our prayer of confession? God of our, si our sides, our loud and our cries sound out. We feel trauma of these times. But we know you long with us for our suffering you long with us for our suffering to end you do not delight in any wickedness we confess that we do not know how to journey to jerusalem with you we are lost before the journey even begins help us to find the way we pray amen God, it is through the abundance of your steadfast love I will enter your house. It is by the grace of God that we can be assured of the truth. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. We cannot miss how you heal or answer every suffer's prayer yet we believe your grace responds where faith and doubt unite to care your hands the blood eat on the cross survive to hold and heal and warn to carry all through death and life and cradle children yet unborn. The pain that will not go away, that guilt that clings from things long past, the fear of what the future holds our present as if meant to last but present too is love which tends the hurt we never hope to find the private agonies inside the memories that hold Some have come who need your help, and some have come to make amends as hands which shape and save the world are present in the touch of friends. Lord, let your spirit meet us here to mend the body. To disentangle peace from pain and make your broken people whole. Our first reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. 
When the day drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Our second reading presents a continuing testament and is a poem entitled Falling by Diane Noitzi. It feels like a tightrope stretched yawningly across my days. One false step and I'll fall endlessly as in a dream where the death is the falling. Yet I want to live within my life with a fullness, just as a dancing flame devours the air, not choke on smoldering damp wood. The narrower the boundaries, the fiercer the energy. I look for markers, signposts of the spirit to define my journey a tiny patch of white violets like a passing note. Birds returning to the feeders in a well-tempered fugue. I watch a ripple of wind across my garden. There is a dance of walnut leaves, great tendrils sway, and even the climbing rose rocks gently across the light. The wind itself I do not see, only the surging power and the leaves bear witness. Is it the same with the breath of God? For all I encounter is a cathedral forest of arches, a rose iridescent against the twilight, a sharing of ideas with a friend as the spirit breathes across my life. In our story, this is the moment that Jesus turns towards Jerusalem. And as we begin our Lent journey, Jesus begins his journey to Jerusalem, and everything is going to change. And his journey begins in almost a completely disheartening way. At his first stop, the town refuses to receive them, and at the second, the folks are interested, and yet they have these commitments. They have their but firsts. At the first stop where they were rejected, it's the disciples who say, burn it down. Burn it to the ground. And I wonder how often our anger, how when we've been offended by others, that our response is to respond in the worst ways of those who have offended us. The worst ways we perceive them. If we would really clear the earth of folks who have treated others unkindly or cruelly. And I wonder if Jesus' response to those in the second town was the same to his disciples. We are moving towards something. We have to keep going. The kind of plows that they would have been using in the ancient times were ones that if one was not actively working the plow, 
the plow wouldn't be in the ground, and the animals wouldn't, would stop moving as well. There would be no work done. So it isn't to say that we let injustices stand, but sometimes the fight is a distraction from the call of Christ to transform the world, to continue on the journey, even if it's hard sometimes, even if it's misunderstood, even if people reject us, that sometimes what we have to do is brush the dust off of what has been and focus on the call we have been given. Lent is a time of reflection and resetting. And Ash Wednesday is a time to let go and let die of that which is calling us back to a life which we've already left behind and calling us to know and believe that new life and resurrection is already here. This Wednesday, today, this Ash Wednesday in the evening, between 2 and 7, we'll have a prayer station outside of the church available whenever you are able to come. You're invited to pick something, to find something that you need to let go of. Maybe it's one of these words. Maybe it's fear or regret or shame, bad self-talk. I have some ideas. We'll take them. You'll take the one and put it in the fire and watch it burn. Watch it turn to ash. And then you're invited to carry something with you into this season. A word of encouragement, a word of reminder, a word from God. If you're not able to join us in person, if you're too far away, if you're seeing this video a little late, I invite you to think about what you might need to let go of. It might not be giving up chocolate. It might be letting go of some anger. Go ahead and write that down and then safely, if you can safely burn, burn it at home, maybe crumple it up, throw it in water or throw it away. And if you send me a message, I will send you a word to carry with you into this season. Maybe it's love or grace, inspiration, something to carry you through this season, to help you focus, to keep your hand on the plow while we do the work, something to call you, something for your journey. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, you are the God of ashes, so that when food tastes like dust upon the tongue, when we feel grubby and soiled, when we feel defeated, you've already been there, taking the long walk to death, walking grubby, dry-mouthed, and alone. And you invite each of us every year to take the journey with you so that neither of us are alone, you invite us to walk in our own stumbling way with our own deaths. And you remind us that we are but dust, and to dust we will return. And it's a good to remember and process that fact, because though we are dust, we are beloved siblings of Christ. And so we walk the path to Jerusalem together, because it is a journey worth taking. Be with us as we journey, we pray, O oh God. Amen. Lord Jesus, who through forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to stay as you with Satan did contend and did the victory win oh give us strength to persevere in you to conquer sin and through these 
days of penitence with through this passion tide yes evermore in life and death O Christ with us abide abide with us till when this life of suffering shall be past and Easter of unending joy we may attain at last. Beloved community, it is from dust we were created and to dust we will return. And in the meantime, the times between we are called to live the calling of Jesus to love each other, to love our neighbor, to look forward to the new life. Amen. <laughs>